The following video is a simple demonstration on how you can use Procalc to perform some simple calculations on your Nexus data. Procalc is a visual application for creating custom kinematic models, variables, and event calculations using a simple wizard-based system. This means that all calculations are performed using drop-down boxes, which guide you through the process. In addition, as you perform these calculations, you will actually see a preview in the 3D workspace, allowing you to check to make sure that the parameters you are calculating are correct. Lastly, once you have all your calculations complete, you can apply them to all your uh, trials using a batch processing feature. To use Procalc, you will need a valid Nexus 2 license, as well as labeled trials saved in the C3D format. In this trial, I've got a calibration range of motion trial for the uh, right arm uh, and thorax. When you first open Procalc, there are five tabs across the top. The first is data management, and this is the same data management that is shared by Nexus and Procalc. This allows you to select trials, as I will do here. So I've got that same range of motion trial that I showed in Nexus, as well as select multiple trials for batch processing. Uh, in order to access the next four tabs, you will need to have a trial open. The first tab is input parameters, and this is any static or, or constant parameter that you want to include as part of your model. This could be a leg length or an arm length. Um, it can also be read from the MP file that was saved uh, in Nexus. The next tab over is variables, and this is where you're going to spend most of your time. Uh, this is where most of the calculations will be performed, and you will see this shortly. The fourth tab is the events, where we can use very complex calculations to uh, fill up our time bar with specific events that we want to uh, take note of. Lastly, we have parameters, and this is uh, any additional parameters that we want to save uh, that we didn't have in our MP file. So if we wanted to calculate some new parameters such as a local coordinate uh, within a local coordinate system. So within this uh, simple demonstration, I'm going to perform three simple calculations. The first one is going to be a simple midpoint. The second is to calculate a single, a simple angle. And lastly, to calculate an Euler angle. To calculate a simple midpoint, I have navigated back to the variables tab. Polcalc uses schemes in order to save the calculations that are being performed on a trial. To create a new scheme, I'm going to go ahead and click on the screen plus button. I'm going to call this simple midpoint. Now I have the option of adding in new calculations. So once I click add, it's, it's prompting me to save a name, so I'll just call this the right shoulder joint center. And then I have a bunch of different functions that I can choose from, one of them being a point. Within that, I have an, uh, an extra drop down which allows me to select what type of point I want to calculate. In this case, it's going to be halfway between A and B. So here it already specifies point A and B. Now all I need to do is go into my workspace and click on the two markers that I want to include. So it's going to be a posterior shoulder marker and an anterior shoulder marker. And you can see instantly it's giving me a preview for where that simple midpoint is going to be. In addition, you can see that I've got the XYZ components shown here as well in my workspace. To create a simple angle, I'm going to navigate back to the variables tab. I'm going to create a new scheme again. I'm going to call this one simple angle. And I'm going to add in uh, a calculation to calculate an angle. So let's do right elbow angle. I'm then going to change the function into angle. And we can see that there are many different options for how you want to calculate an angle. As this is just a simple angle, I'm only going to select the first one between A and B. You can see here that it wants vectors. We don't actually have vectors calculated, so I'm going to first go ahead and create those vectors. So knowing what I know from the simple midpoint, I'm going to create vectors from the elbow joint center to the shoulder joint center for the upper arm and from the wrist joint center to the elbow joint center for the lower arm. So let's go ahead and first calculate those uh, shoulder joint centers again, or sorry, those joint centers. So first for the shoulder, so let's do halfway between A and B. I'm going to select my two markers again and add another one for right elbow joint center. Again, a point halfway between A and B. I can select the markers again. Lastly, we're going to do a right wrist joint center. Again, that's going to be a point halfway between A and B. Uh, you can also use the drop down box here as well, so if you know it's lateral wrist and medial wrist, you can do it that way instead. 
Okay, so we actually need to go ahead and create two vectors. So let's go ahead and add in a new vector that's going to be called upper arm. We're going to go from, uh, sorry, we want a vector here and from point A to B. So my first point is going to be my elbow joint center. My second point is going to be my shoulder joint center. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the lower arm. So we're going to have a vector here from A to B from my elbow, elbow joint center to my wrist joint center, like so. And you can actually see the vector again being displayed in real time. Lastly, if I come back into my right elbow angle, I can see that if I select A to B again, it's going to want two vectors. I can actually select two vectors. It's going to be upper arm to lower arm. And you can see that the angle is being calculated. The great thing about this is um, the, the preview allows me to, to verify that I'm actually calculating the angle that I want. If I had, for whatever reason, swapped my two vectors for the lower arm, or my two points uh, for the lower arm, changing the direction of the vector, so let's take, take this to right wrist joint center to elbow joint center, we can see now when I select back on right elbow angle that it's calculated uh, the angle that I don't want for the elbow, the an external angle almost. Um, so I'm going to come back into uh, the lower arm and fix that again, right wrist joint center, and Sorry, that's going to be the right elbow joint center to right wrist joint center. And then if I come back into the elbow angle, you can see that it has fixed itself and, and gone back to the angle that I like. Uh, lastly, the, the one thing that I want to do is any angle that I, or any calculation that I want to display back into Nexus into the C3D, I'm going to go ahead and click this Save to C3D box over here. I'm then going to save this scheme so that I can run it later on, on my trial. To calculate a more complex Euler angle, I'm once again going to be in the variables tab. I'm going to create a new scheme. I'm going to call this one Euler angle. Uh, and instead of having to recreate some of those calculations, I can actually use that previous scheme as my base scheme. So it'll already do all the joint centers for me. This time instead though, I'm actually going to create uh, segments for the upper arm instead of just vectors. So I'm going to go ahead and add, we'll call this an upper arm. And you can see that if I have a duplicate of a name, that box will be red until I add more characters, uh, and then it's fine. So it's going to be upper arm segment. I'm going to select segment from the function list, and then I can choose how I want to define it. So I'm actually going to use points uh, to create vectors and then cross products uh, to create a local coordinate system for the upper arm and lower arm. You can see I have different rotations here that I can choose from. So the first point I'm going to select is the right elbow joint center, and that's going to go to the shoulder joint center to define, define my first line, which is going to be the x-axis. And then I'm going to use another vector uh, to cross uh, with the first one to create my second axis. So that's actually going to be to my lateral elbow marker. So you can see here now I've got a coordinate system. If I don't like the order in which I, uh, I created that coordinate system, I can go in and change it. And you can see the coordinate system has uh, switched accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the lower arm segment. Again, I can choose which, which order I want to do, um, select. Again, I'm going to do some uh, select some points. So it's going to be the right wrist joint center to the right elbow joint center. For my first defining line and my second defining line is going to be out to the lateral wrist. Again, if I don't like the order, I can manipulate it as such using the drop down menu. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create an Euler angle. So previously, we saw that we, we did the angles with uh, vectors. This time, we're going to do it with segments. So you can see here, we can choose the, the rotation order that we want, and it's going to be between those two segments. So I can just select upper arm and lower arm. What's nice is I can, uh, in real time, see the calculation of the angles, um, and I can go ahead and manipulate, again, the order of the rotations by switching the coordinate system and then going back and looking at the angles. Again, I'm going to just make sure that I click Save to C3D so that it actually gets output back into Nexus. So I'm going to go ahead and save this scheme and just show you how to simply run this uh, scheme so that it calculates the outputs. I'm going to go ahead and right click on the trial and mark it. Then you can see that this process mark trials down below has become active. I can now click on it. Uh, in Nexus, you'll see that I have no model outputs right now for calibration no 3. If I reopen this trial, you can see now I've got angles and I've got my uh, right uh, elbow angle and my Euler, sorry, my Euler angle um, here.
here as well. So you can see that you've got both angles um, output for you. Thank you for watching this short demonstration on how to use ProCalc. There are many more operations that can be performed, so if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at